Okay, so we've been asked to talk about uh, central venous catheterization, looking at an article which is examining uh, the subclavian approach, comparing the efficacy and safety of the supraclavicular versus the infraclavicular approach um, when uh, using the subclavian as a site for central venous catheterization. This is the journal article that we're looking at. It was published in 2022, and the it was a randomized control trial which was carried out at Seoul National University Hospital between 2000, 2018 and 2020. And we'll say a little bit more about that in a little while. With central venous catheterization, there are normally three sites which are used, uh, the subclavian, femoral, and the internal jugular. Looking specifically at the subclavian, it is relatively more comfortable for patients than the other sites. It, has a, it carries a lower infection risk than, for example, the femoral site. However, it does carry a higher risk of pneumothorax. Other complications associated with subclavian uh, central venous catheterization are common for all sites, and they include arterial puncture, hematoma formation, hemothorax, pneumothorax, and catheterization failure. There have been two, so in this particular journal article, they cite two previous uh, randomized control trials and one meta-analysis, which have been conducted uh, comparing the two approaches from an efficacy point of view. For example, they looked at catheterization failure or misplacement and time required for procedure as primary outcomes. However, they did no comparison of safety outcomes. A previous uh, randomized controlled trials essentially show that for a single operator ultrasound guided supraclavicular approach, sorry, the supraclavicular approach was quicker than the infraclavicular. Um, however, the success rates were similar and had fewer complications. So the supraclavicular was shown as being preferable in terms of efficacy. However, as previously stated, they hadn't compared it for outcomes for safety. So the hypothesis of this paper is that the supraclavicular approach is a non is non inferior compared to the infraclavicular approach in terms of safety as well as efficacy during the ultrasounded guided right subclavian venous catheterization. Methods that they used, um, so just in terms of methodology, it was actually quite a large scale randomized controlled trial um, involving 401 participants. And as I've said previously, it compared approaches um, using safety and efficacy as primary outcomes. In, in terms of the inclusion criteria, um, adults between the ages of 20 and 79 years old uh, were selected. Um, so these were patients who required CVC placement under general anaesthetic for elective neurosurgery uh, procedures at the Seoul National University Hospital um, between September 2018 and May 2020. So this was a single uh, centre setting. In terms of the exclusion criteria, um, this involved infection or medical devices, such as pacemakers at the puncture site, right subclavian venous thrombosis, he, any hemostatic disorders, any use of current anticoagulants, and any previous surgery that may have distorted the anatomy of the subclavian vein. The patients were randomly allocated into the two groups um, by an independent anaesthetist using a computer program. Uh, and they were allocated to the infraclavicular group, which was the control group, or the supraclavicular group, which was the intervention group, in a one-to-one -one ratio. In total, there were four anaesthetists involved. In, in terms of, sorry about that, just bear with us one moment. Okay, so there were four operators, separate operators involved. So there were four anaesthetists, all of whom had experience successfully inserting at least 10 CVCs via both methods. In terms of keeping controls, in terms of uh, keeping other variables the same, the same perioperative management um, 
was conducted for all patients. So all patients were kept in the same position with a bed flat, pillow removed, head, neck and arms in neutral position. Exactly the same equipment was used. So multi-lumen CDC sets and the same um, brand of portable ultrasound machine was used. Mechanical ventilation was stopped before venous puncture and restarted after successful catheterization in all cases. Just to go through some definitions, a failed attempt was defined if rescue ventilation was required due to oxygen saturations falling below 92%, or if no successful, successful catheterization um, was conducted within three minutes. If there were three failed attempts by one operator, another anaesthetist would take over. If there was a total of six failed attempts, subclavian catheterization was seen as having failed and um, they would proceed to jugular venous catheterization. Instead, the time required for venous puncture and catheterization was recorded as the time interval from skin puncture to venous puncture and to successful catheterization, respectively. Looking a little bit more closely at the population, in total, 416 patients were randomized. Um, however, only 401 were actually included in the analysis. Eight were excluded, four withdrew their consent three did not meet the inclusion criteria. And if you look at the two groups, the intervention group and the control group, you can see that the demographics are both roughly comparable in terms of gender, average age, um, ASA grades and BMI as well. Um, so moving on to the results, um, the primary outcome that they looked at was catheterization related complications. So this was kind of a broader term, um, whereas specifically they looked at quite a few outcomes including catheter misplacement um, and mechanical complications such as pneumothorax, hemothorax, hematoma formation and arterial puncture. Um, what they found was that there was a significant difference between the two groups. So supraclavicular had a significantly lower rate um, at 3%, whereas infraclavicular had 13.4%. Um, in terms of, so specifically looking at the breakdown, um, the catheter misplacements were significantly higher in the infraclavicular group um, versus the supraclavicular group. So 1% versus 10.4%, and that was significant. Um, so the secondary outcomes that they looked at, um, they were mostly all, um, they didn't have any sort of significant differences between the two groups. The only thing that they did find a significant difference for was time taken for venous puncture. So uh, for supraclavicular, um, it was nine seconds and infraclavicular was 13 seconds. So um, slightly longer to do an infraclavicular. But in the other outcomes, such as overall time required for the CVC, overall success, um, complications such as pneumothorax, arterial puncture and rescue breaths, there was no significant difference. So the conclusion that they drew from this um, was that the supraclavicular approach is better for right subclavian venous catheterization compared with infraclavicular. Um, however, within the primary outcome, you can't see the mass. So within the primary outcome, you can see that um, this is quite a broad term, which includes quite a few things, but the only thing that they actually found um, a difference for was catheter misplacement. So if you look at the results for the primary outcome, um, this is the primary outcome, um, this is catheter misplacement, these are all the mechanical complications. So whereas there was no difference in, no significant difference in the mechanical complications, most of these results came from catheter misplacement, which was, as you can see, significantly higher within the infraclavicular group as compared with supraclavicular group. However, things like pneumothoraces, which is um, more of a serious complication, um, there was no significant difference between the two groups. Um, with regards to secondary outcome, um, the only thing that they did find a significant difference for was time required for venous puncture. So nine seconds, as we said, for supraclavicular and 13 for inf infraclavicular. So um, looking at the analysis of the paper, um, there was good randomization. It's an RCT, so quite high, quite high on the hierarchy of evidence. Um, the sample size wasn't small, so over 400 participants was enough to um, show some difference between the two groups, um, so it was adequate. Um, and the main advantage with this paper compared to previous RCTs and meta-analyses that were done is that it looked at safety, whereas the other papers didn't really do that. Um, the weaknesses are um, it's a single centre study um, with only four anaesthetists, um, so perhaps this paper could be improved by doing a larger multi 
center study with um, a larger number of operators with a variety of experience. Um, there were many variables in the primary outcome, as we talked about, um, of catheterization related complications. So catheter misplacement, which is something that can potentially be fixed quite quickly there and then um, versus pneumothorax, um, which is quite a dangerous outcome, um, shouldn't possibly be put into the same category. Um, and that's what's, what was used to draw conclusions. Um, whereas majority of the significant difference, as we saw from the table, actually only came from catheter misplacements only. Um, larger sample size may have been better to show more significant differences in the secondary outcomes. So a lot of those secondary outcomes, as we saw, didn't show any significant difference. But perhaps if we'd increased the sample size a bit more, we could have seen a difference. Um, and finally, all the data was from elective neurosurgery. Um, so it might not be applicable fully to critically ill patients who um, make up a large population of people who need central lines. Um, so yeah, and these are our, our references. Any questions? Has anyone else joined the meeting? No. Okay. Good presentation.